Hi guys, this is Kevin from ReadyMade RC, and today I'm here to show you how to build the Strix Stratosurfer plug and play. So let's get started. Okay guys, once you've unboxed everything, you want to make sure you have all of the key components. Uh, starting out with the quick setup guide, if you don't want to watch this video, you can get started right away with the uh, setup guide. It's pretty in-depth and shows you exactly what to do. Uh, we also have the uh, decals, the fuselage, the canopy with the top piece right and left wings, the wing spar, the motor pod with the SC, the vertical stabilizer, and the horizontal, horizontal stabilizer. We also have the servo extensions and Y cable, propeller, and the nose wood piece. And last of all, you're going to want to make sure you have five uh, M3 bolts. Uh, three of them are shorter than the longer two on the left. We're going to do the tail section first. So the first thing you do, Install the cables onto the servo plugs. And we're going to feed these lines through the fuselage and make sure they get past this wood section right here. If you have an issue, if it, gets, if it gets hung up in here anywhere, you can take this cap off and feed the lines through. You shouldn't have any problems though, it's a fairly smooth surface inside. You can see them come through here. The servo goes on top of the horizontal stabilizer and the rudder just keys in to the plastic right here. It will seat and take one of the shorter 40 millimeter screws Flip over this, insert into the bottom of the tail. Should push through and seat. Phillips head screwdriver. Just tighten it down until it's snug, and then a little bit more. Now you can glue this if you want to. Um, I would definitely sand both surfaces. Um, foam tack or welder's glue if you feel like you want to have a little bit more uh, security through here, but we've been flying it just fine without it, so I think you should be fine too. Now your tail's done. Next you wanna, you're going to want to locate your right and left wings as well as your motor pod. The spar and the Y harness for the ailerons. Pick a wing, insert the spar all the way through until it stops, right there. Your other wing, same thing. But we're going to stop about an inch from the center from fully inserting. About right there. Before we forget, we're going to install the Y harness. Like so. I'm going to flip it back over. Unravel your ESC. And the wires go through the front like this. We have two channels. We've got one channel in the back for the ailerons and optional flap servos. In the front, the larger one is for your motor cables. Insert it to one side and squeeze the wings together. Make sure you don't have any wires caught. Slide your motor pod over on, on top of the wings while pulling the motor wires through. Okay, now we're going to grab the fuselage. Slide your, guide your ESC forward along with the, uh, the Y harness for the ailerons. You may wish to attach it to the side of the Velcro or to the wooden structure, whatever you prefer. Make sure no wires are on the outside below the wing before you insert the screws. Now the longer 50 millimeter screws go into the front of the wing and the shorter 40 millimeters go in the back towards the motor. Insert all four screws. And tighten down until they're snug. All the way. So 
So next you're going to want to locate your propeller and the appropriate ring. Slide your prop onto the shaft, making sure that the letters are facing forward. If the letters are facing rearward, you're not going to have nearly as much thrust and you probably won't last very long on your first takeoff. So locate a 10 millimeter wrench and tighten down until snug on the rear of the prop. Now that you've had your, all of your uh, control wires to the nose of the plane, you're going to want to install your receiver. The only limit I would uh, place on your travel for your servos would be the tail servo. Uh, about 10 millimeters up is about all you want. Any more than this, you'll be hitting your rudder. And with this much throw, you'll be doing some pretty tight loops. So you don't need more than that. Downward out of the same amount, 10 millimeters. Everywhere else, you can go to pretty much max throw on your setup. It's a pretty forgiving plane. Uh, it'll roll easily, but it won't get out of hand. So let's talk about camera options. Now with the Stratosurfer, there's plenty of places to, to put on your uh, HD camera and your FPV camera. We included this wood piece so you can actually install it underneath and have a solid place to mount a 9 gram servo or slots for a strap for a run cam or even a GoPro. What you're going to want to do is trace a line where your servo is going to go, uh, drill two holes however you want to secure your camera. That will make your, your uh, perfect, a perfect outline of where you need to uh, screw this in at underneath. So use your wood screws however you want to do it. We didn't go all the way for you because not everyone wants holes in their canopies. So you can use this to reinforce that. Another option is to simply just Velcro it on there. So for the main canopy, this piece comes off. You have slots for your GoPro, and it's actually offset to the side so it won't cover your camera lens. You can also put your run cam in the center here and strap that down. And in the front, we have a 9 gram servo slot. This will work well with the CXN Designs pan and tilt, the Fat Shark pan and tilt, or your own, just sticking a 9 gram servo in there with a camera on top for pan. So for your main decals, we have some pretty large decals on top. What I would recommend is snipping it right here to make it easier for you to, to apply them onto the wing. Simple cut right there, gets through that. Make sure your hands are clean before you try to peeling things, otherwise uh, it doesn't stick as well wherever your hands are dirty. Okay, and now you can see we have the decals fully attached to the wings and tail. I think it looks pretty good. So you may be wondering why would I want to upgrade from my ready-made RC Surfer or Bixler or just any kind of uh, general plane in this shape. Uh, one of our favorite things about this design is the plastic blow-molded fuselage. What this does is it uh, allows it to be much more crash resistant than typical foam. You won't have as much uh, uh, shattering up here in the nose as you do with a traditional uh, plane. We also gives us, uh, it also gives us some more opportunity to have correct NACA ducts for cooling. We have an exit in the tail as well. It also gives you a lot more room inside the fuselage. So you can stick uh, bigger batteries, more equipment, more uh, like a vector, anything you want, all the way through the tail is open area. It's another reason why we have the hatch on the rear. You can 
easily put your GPS unit back there without having to cut into the foam on the side or mess with any uh, wiring issues. And if you've seen our other videos, you can do a touch and go with the plastic fuselage if the conditions are right. Usually short, shorter, uh, dry grass makes it easier to do, but this plane can do touch and goes without landing gear just based on the, small, the, uh, the smooth bottom surface. Another advantage this has over a traditional uh, RMRC surfer is the addition of flaps. So you can do it in either a flap or a spoiler configuration depending on what your needs are, but they're already pre-molded in here. All you need to do is cut the slots, add your hardware and servo, and you've got some more fun to have with this plane, trying out different uh, setups. Another cool feature is how easy it is to change the motor if you needed to or to get to it. If you, if you remember on uh, like the RMRC surfer, you would either have to, it's either glued into the, the uh, pod already or it's really hard to work on. This has a single screw that you remove and the whole motor pod comes out. How to do this, you're going to want to insert your screwdriver here, simply remove the bolt, and the motor comes all the way out. Now this makes it easy for shimming if you go to a more powerful motor, change the prop size. It's already pretty well shimmed uh, from the factory with the, uh, the uh, thrust line. So, but if you do notice some down, nose down or nose up tendencies on throttle, you can put some small washers in here to adjust the motor angle. Slide it back in and tighten the screw down. So that's a really nice feature to have for quick and uh, easy adjustments or changes to equipment. So now you've added all of the extra weight you can in this uh, Stratosurfer. And uh, if we had the same wings we had before, you would still have the same amount of lift, lift area. What we did to accommodate the extra weight was had about 20 millimeters of extra wing cord, which is the width from the leading edge to the trailing edge. We had a 20 millimeters here for a lot of extra uh, wing surface. So you can hold the extra, extra battery weight and uh, any other equipment you have inside. We also about doubled the surface area of all control surfaces. So if you notice here, the elevator is cut a lot deeper into the middle of the, uh, the uh, cord on the uh, horizontal stabilizer, as well as the rudder. That was one of the complaints was the rudder was too small. Some guys were actually modifying theirs to extend it. So in this mold, we made it a lot bigger. So while we did increase the wing cord on this wing, wing by uh, 20 millimeters, we didn't increase the width at all, or the, the wing span. This makes it easy to fit inside your car still without taking the wings off. In my Honda Civic, this does fit in the back seat without removing any of the any parts on the plane that you'd like to uh, uh, travel with. So, it's uh, it's still a very uh, easy to travel with plane, and uh, it's, it flies great. It's one of my favorite planes right now to fly. The difference in this plane from like a race wing for me is uh, it's just so much more relaxing to go up in the sky, use the pan and tilt, look around, catch a few thermals. And uh, just to you know, experiment with the flaps and see what kind of uh, takeoff and landings I can do with this. It's nice and easy to crab into the wind and uh, with the extra surface area on the rudder and get a nice smooth landing even on windy days. All right, guys. So that's the Strix Stratosurfer Plug and Play assembly. Uh, go ahead and pick one up at ReadyMadeRC.com or any Strix RC authorized dealer. Thanks for watching.